Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. In the Star Wars galaxy, droids are a pretty common sight. They're completely integrated into most societies, and for one reason or another, they haven't joined together and decided to murder everyone and take over the entire galaxy. Now, that doesn't mean you guys should just completely trust them or treat them like eagles, hashtag humanity first, but that does mean I can advocate their usefulness to you guys in whatever endeavor you're trying to accomplish. Whether you run a business, a religious cult, paramilitary organization, or underground pharmaceutical delivery service, chances are a droid could really help your operation out. Because here's the thing, droids, whether they have emotions or not, aren't living and have less needs. They won't need cigarette breaks, health insurance, or emotional support animals, which is why they're the best slaves at workers that money can buy. And luckily, Star Wars has broken them down into five classifications, which I will explain to you guys in this video. First up is Class 1. These are droids that are capable at math, the sciences, and medical procedures. Like the 2-1B surgical droid, which is skilled at not only cutting open human flesh, but also scaring children. With large memory banks full of information about the anatomy of millions of species, the surgical droid was a one-size-fit-all solution for a triage center with a limited budget, or a legal operation. It had modular limbs, which meant it could handle a wide variety of tools and instruments. Then there's the midwife droid, which I'm sure also gave newborns nightmares. Certain astromechs could also fall into this category, like the R3 unit, which was very similar to the R2 unit, but had upgraded processors, giving it a boost in computing power. It was oftentimes used in data analysis aboard Imperial ships. Then there's the Toto 360, used by Cad Bane. It was a techno droid, which was useful for breaking into heavily secured locations and security systems. Whether you're conducting operations without a license or need a math tutor, Class 1 droids are the perfect droids for you. In Class 2, we have droids that are designed for engineering and the technical sciences. Without them, most fleets wouldn't be able to keep their starships in the air or space. Both. Examples of Class 2 would be the Dumb Series Pit Droid. These were small droids used for cheap repair jobs, oftentimes found in the pit crews of pod racing teams. Next up is the Plunk Series Power Droids, similar to the Gonk Droids. They were basically mobile recharging centers, like giant portable battery packs for machinery that needed to jump start. Then there's the Wet 15 Septoid Treadwell Droid. These were battlefield engineer droids used to repair turrets. Most astromechs also fit in this category, although because many of them help plot nav points for hyperspace jumps, they could also be considered Class 1 as well. So if you're running a small insurgent fleet or a chop shop for stolen vehicles, a Class 2 droid is a must to keep your operations running smoothly. Class 3 is up next. These are droids that are skilled in social services and communication. One example is a protocol and translation droid like C-3PO, who is designed to interact and assist organics in all sorts of ways. Then there's the more specifically designed droids like the BD-3000 model, which worked in spas and beauty salons. There are also the FA-5 valet droid and the LEP servant droids, which also have their own specific purposes. I'm sure there are also love robots, but we'll have to wait until Disney decides to make a TV show about the underworld of Coruscant. So, whether you're running an illegal massage parlor or need a translator for an illicit deal with soulless aliens, the Class 3 droid is perfect for you. Class 4 droids is where all the fun is. These are droids used for military and security functions. This encompassed the many battle droids used by the Confederacy of Independent Systems, like the B-1 Standard Unit, the B-2 Super Battle Droid, Droidicas, and BX Commando Droids. There are also many subcategories. One would be the security droids like the KX series or the OOM Security Battle Droid, the predecessor of the B-1 Battle Droid. Another subcategory would be the Recon and Scout Droids like the DRK-1 Dark Eye probe droid used by Darth Maul, or the Imperial probe droid used by Vader to recon the Hoth Rebel base. Lastly, and perhaps the most dangerous in this category, are assassin droids, like the infamous HK-47 and IG-88 units, both of whom were known to have developed independent personalities and become masterless. These are perhaps the most useful type of droids, whether you're running a religious cult or a collection agency. A Class 4 droid is perfect for all of your security needs, but do remember guys, keep a restraining bolt on these killing machines or they'll come after you next. Lastly, we have Class 5. These are the droids that are at the bottom of the totem pole. They mainly do service jobs and manual labor jobs. Some of these droids also did some simple repair jobs like the MSE repair and housekeeping droid. Then there were more general labor droids like the PK series worker droid. 
Others were used for more specific jobs like hazmat cleaning, garbage retrieval, uh, foundry working, mining, basically jobs that aliens don't want to do anymore. Now, even though droids had classes, it didn't mean that they were limited to a specific station throughout their lifespan. R2-D2, for instance, started out life as a lowly astromech repair droid on a luxury yacht. But then he became an integral part of the Rebel Alliance and served as a soldier, navigator, pilot, and even spy. So if R2-D2 can do all of that without even being more than three feet tall or having arms, just imagine what all the other droids are capable of. Which is probably why you always want to keep a restraining bolt on a droid and also have an ion blaster at your side. Just in case. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know in the comment section below what class of droids do you need for your everyday operation. And also don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.